Hey everybody, it's Michael Dougal with EXP Realty. During this video, I'm gonna update you entirely on our real estate market here in the greater Toronto area. In case you have not heard the major headline, it's that the average price has increased by 21.6% over the past 12 months. However, though, do keep in mind that during March 2020, the average price was especially low because that's when this whole pandemic started. But what's so is that the average price even increased by 5% just from February 2021 to March 2021. Let's take a look at this neat chart over here where they have the breakdown of different style of properties as well as how the price has changed in the 416 and the 905. So we can see that detached homes did experience the most appreciation year over year by 26.6%. Semi-detached homes up by 17.5%. Townhouses up by 20.7%. And condo apartments are up by 2.6%. This is very positive as throughout the past few months, the year over year percent change for condominiums was actually lower due to the fact that the pandemic had really severely affected the condo market. It is absolutely remarkable that during December 2020, the average price was $932,000, whereas now we can see that in March, the average price was $1,097,000. And this has pretty much been the story over the past few months. It seems that Every time I do one of these market update videos lately, I'm telling you that we've reached a new record when it comes to the average price increasing and increasing. And quite honestly, as being a professional real estate agent for quite a bit of time, it does concern me. I remember when this was happening back in late 2016 and especially early 2017 when the average price kept on increasing. There were all the signs that some sort of government intervention would happen and they would somehow decrease the prices because that's what we saw in Vancouver first once they slap the tax to any foreign purchaser. So hopefully that doesn't happen over here. Um, if you are considering investing in a house, I mean, it's a really good idea to do so because the past five or 10 years have really proven that real estate is only gonna go up in value long-term. But this is very concerning for uh, first-time buyers or let's say if you were looking to purchase a property for your children, knowing that the average price is this high. Um, in terms of the general affordability, just over the past year, the average household income to the average purchase price was 18 times. So basically 18 times your household income is what it would take to buy a property, whereas now it's 21 times. But here's the good news is uh, if you are flexible on the area and you can see yourself maybe moving out of Toronto, there are much more affordable options. These are the top 10 most affordable markets in 2020 anyway, when taking into consideration the average household income and the average price. The first being Halifax, Nova Scotia. This list is all across Canada. However, we can see there are options in Ontario, such as Windsor, London. So speaking of getting the best bang for your buck, if you are curious to know what you can afford in different areas in Ontario, I've made this really informative video here where I show you what you can buy with a low $600,000 budget. I go to Barrie, I go all the way to London, I go back to Oshawa. So that video is definitely worth a watch. Speaking to buyers and sellers every single day, what I'm hearing is that since more people are accustomed to working at home remotely, they can therefore sell their Toronto property and move out of the city. So they're not necessarily moving from 416 to the 905, but they're even moving to the 519 or even the 705 area codes because again, they don't really need to be in the city unless they maybe have children in a particular school or perhaps they're more comfortable being here because maybe they have their doctor here or they have close relatives in town. Looking at this year over year summary chart, we can see that the actual number of sales was up by 97% now at 15,652 sales. And yes, this is obviously more given that in 2000 20, the second half of March was significantly affected because of COVID. However, looking at February 2021, the number of sales was only 10,970. So just over the past month, that's quite a large increase, about 40%. And this really is quite a significant difference. There were almost 5,000 more sales in March versus February 2021. So I'm finding that in the marketplace now, there is a big population of people who are elder and these people are more comfortable putting their homes on the market now and selling to be downsized. Whereas for the majority of last year, they weren't comfortable with it. They wanted to wait until the pandemic kind of finished and was cleared up. But what's so is I think they've accepted the fact that this is really gonna take a long time and they've put more trust into this whole process knowing that when buyers come and look at properties, 
Yes, they're wearing masks very often. They're signing disclosures saying that they have not traveled or they've been infected. And so this is great because it's a healthier real estate market for both sellers and buyers. Let's now take a look at some of the hottest areas in the GTA based on the days on market and the average list price to sales price ratio. We can see that um, in Milton and Halton Hills, the average home is only selling in eight days. In Halton Hills, the average list price to sale price is 110% of its asking. In Milton, it's 107% of its asking. And then heading east of Toronto to Durham region, pretty much every city is very, very hot. In terms of homes are selling fast, they're selling with multiple offers, sometimes 10 or even 20 offers. Why? Um, it could be because the average sale price is a lot lower. Over in the Durham region, the average price is only $901,000. And let's contrast that with York region, it's at 1.265. And the city of Toronto, Peel, and the Halton region, the average price is well over a million. So in Durham region, as shown, Ajax, Brock, Clarington, Oshawa, and Whitby all have days on market, like seven days on market or eight days on market. And furthermore, the average home is all selling between 110% of its asking price to 115% of its asking price. So if you see a property in Durham region that has been on the market, let's say over three weeks, it's very likely that it could be a problem property. If you only have a budget of $800,000, then I made a video here where I point out properties which you can afford with that budget. So note that you should have some hope. And if you are considering buying or selling, then call me, call me, call me. My contact information is in the description box below as well. I'm with eXp Realty and I'm looking for ambitious agents to partner with. So do contact me. If you haven't yet subscribed, then do subscribe. I talk real estate and finance on this channel and I will look forward to seeing you all next time.